Hello everyone and welcome to the interactive tutorial to X3 Town Conflict. Now, I would like to say a lot of people have asked me a lot of questions, but a few people have asked me a lot of questions. So, in the end, I've decided to um, start a series of tutorial vids to try and answer any questions you might have. So, beginning players or people that might be interested in the game or want, that want to know more, go right ahead. Even veteran players that might have a question I might be able to answer, go right ahead. I'm not saying I'm an uh, expert on the game, but I do have many hours in these series, so... Well, starting from Reunion, and let me tell you... <laughs> It took me like six reinstalls before I um, before I was able to figure everything out, and that wasn't because the game kept crashing. No, those reinstalls were because I kept getting very frustrated. Reunion has actually the highest learning curve in the game I've ever experienced. Way higher than Term Conflict. I started out here with a vanilla game that makes it easier. To explain some things, and um, oh, I don't know where he flew off to, but there's this uh... Argon domestic oh, maintenance of Argon pest control. There's this uh, flight school guy flying around here that will teach you uh, the basics of movement and shooting. Uh, Argon target. flight school there he is. buster. Can we have a close up, please? And as far as I know, every regular game start has the uh, the flight school guy in there. There's a um, the, there's a couple of mods that create new starts, and I don't I'm not sure if they have the um, flight school guys right at the start every time. Though you might be able to uh, look one up, but by the time you get to the sector where these guys fly around, I can imagine you can already fly and shit. Anyways, I started out here as a humble merchant in um, Heron's Nebula, which is close to uh, Argon. Oh, actually, it is Argon uh, sector. And it's close to Pirate's space. And Mercury. we start out with a uh, Mercury, which is a freighter, and a Discoverer, which is a um, well, kind of a scout fighter, a very light fighter. Now, the first couple of questions that have been asked, asked, sorry, how to enter f and find new systems. Well, that's um. It's rather easy and straightforward, but in some sectors it can be very uh, tricky. In the starting sector we have, which is Heron's Nebula, everything has been discovered already. You see this, um, let me see if I can zoom in, yes, there we go. This light blue circle, that's the range our own bar scanner can see. And if you enter a sector that you haven't been in before, you're gonna have to um, scan the entire sector if you want to um, index everything on your oh crap sector map and now um, you might think well that's an odd odd shape but it's because of my mercury my transport trader he has a um well actually I'm there is this uh, if, if you have no scanner. Let me see. See, he, has, he doesn't have scanner because it should be under installed ship extensions. You'll have a very small range in where this is active. And there are two types of scanners for this. Uh, double or triple. It's been a while since I played. Sorry. Which um, increase the range of the uh, effective scanner range. Now, if you start out in a uh, sector like this. Everything's pretty straightforward and easy. 
can just go... Wait. Gate Argon Prime. Oh, that's Argon Prime, we don't want to go there. It's a little bit easier. No, I want to go to a... Uh, the whole wall. That's a good one. I'm not using default keys, so I can't tell you what buttons I'm pressing. But if you open up uh, this, and then go to controls, and here you can just set up and look up every key there is, which are plenty. There's a lot of that are aren't bound, and I don't think I deleted any, or unbound any. But game comes when when you um, when you start up for the first time. There's gonna be a lot of keys that aren't bound. And in my experience, I don't need a lot of these hotkeys. You'll just have to um, figure that out on your own. If you ever get the feeling like mm, I'm missing something in my control scheme, well then you can just check out here and see if there's anything uh, that might help you. There you go. What I just did was open up the sector map, which, uh, well, shows you what's in this current sector that we're in. But it doesn't work just for this sector. If I had a ship in another sector, I could uh, actively see what's going on there. But as long as you've got a sector mapped, if you went in and uh, went to another sector and it's just empty, you, you don't have anything in there that's not yours. You can still look up what the sector has and uh, uh, what it looks like. As far as you've detected all the stations and ships in there. No, ship, not ships, sorry. I have to correct myself there. Ships will vanish from the uh, list once they're out of scanner range. So naturally, if you don't have a station or friendly ship in the sector, that sees any civilians or allies or enemies you won't see them on the list if you're uh, browsing the universe map so what, what does this tell us? <coughs> sorry this is gonna be one of the main features of the game you're gonna be using it's got a lot of um, things you can do here you can check up what kind of stations there are you can check up what of kind of uh, ships there are in your vicinity, what gates it has and where they lead to. In this case we're going to the hall, which is a sector to the east. And it's got a couple of asteroids that I haven't scanned yet for any minerals. Which I will cover in a later vid, <laughs> don't worry about that yet. Anyways. As this is a vanilla game, there will be a lot of civilians in uh, in here, in any uh, any sector, especially core sectors. And if you're having trouble running your uh, your X3 game, I can highly recommend downloading any mod that uh, uh, removes entirely or tones down the amount of civilians that are in the game. And as for mods go, you can just check out Egosoft's forum because the community there is very active and very informative, also very friendly. So uh, if you got if you've got any other questions, you could always check there. Or uh, if you want to look at all the mods that are available, that's the place to go: the scripting and modding forum. Right. So. What else could we do with this while we wait to go to the? I'm just gonna Gate the hold. select that so I can see how far off we are, how much time I got left. <laughs> uh, what else could we do with this? We can click on a station. This is a free Argon trading station. Let's check typical. the info. Argon space station used and then ignore Argon the Federation standard message territory. she's saying. Developed by Argon over many years. And we can look These at all the stuff this the station has got for sale. Of both comfort so, and technology. here we see it's got a couple of basic things. 
up until the fighter drones and all of these we don't need and they will be at average prices so as a rule of thumb you can get it a lot cheaper if you go to the right factories these upgrades these are ship upgrades which I will get to later and uh, most trading stations have uh, these basic ones but they're um, let's see, sorry yeah I'm gonna sound like a guy in this way anyway I'll show you uh, Argon Prime in a little bit because it has a uh, equipment dock and a shipyard and the equipment dock will have a lot of m a lot more uh, ship upgrades and the shipyard will have none and let you buy a ship this is a fuel distillery it's funny because I thought secret factory is a special was legal wear and uh, better known to all Argon space space fuel Right, well, we're about to enter the next sector, so I'm gonna turn off the. Oh, there we go. <laughs> turn off the autopilot. You might, you might wonder why I specifically turn off the autopilot near gauge, but. Um, it can go haywire. The autopilot is often referred to a space monkey or autopilot. And uh, I forgot what the pillock was about, but yeah, no, the um, the, the ah, what do you call that? When you get too close to something, the proximity scanner, it gets a uh, little uh, overdone at times. Man, my English is bad at the moment. You'll have to forgive that. Anyways, as you can see now, we entered the hole. And we can't see shit. That's because of this um, well, nebula. This fog kind of existence. And this is making it hard to navigate. So the guy or girl, excuse me, that asked me uh, how to find new systems probably flew into these kinds of sectors so it can be pretty hard to find uh, the right stuff in here if we open up the sector map now it's gonna be completely empty except for the part we uh, already flew through I'm gonna hit home and zoom in so this is everything we've scanned up to now and those ships will enter the gate you can tell from their flight path and they'll be uh, gone uh, if I go back to the normal view of the map, I can just tell that uh, due to the size of the map and the uh, spacing and placing of the west gate that you would have a very hard time to find the other gates. But I do know where the gates are and most sectors make a kind of cross if they have four gates like you would expect it uh, to be but some sectors are way off mind you most sectors aren't uh, perfectly aligned or ha don't have the gates perfectly aligned so it's all about exploring and finding all the things now you can al also use the sector map for auto uh, pilot actions just double click somewhere and it will uh, pilot your ship there. There should be a north gate right around here somewhere. And as soon as it uh, pops up in the range of our standard scanner, then we'll s get to see it. Alright, well. When I enter a new game, the first thing I do is pop up the setup factor up to 10 which is the time compression uh, module you're gonna need that a lot because you don't want to fly around like this endlessly I set it up to 10 because my computer can handle it 
Most computers can handle th this, but it will get very choppy and that can create a problem for the autopilot above its normal dish functionality. So when you're flying uh, <laughs> close to... Oh, we reached our point and we haven't found it yet. Alright, well... If you've done this and you haven't found the gate yet, if it's a little bit more northern, you can fly around, but you must not forget the map is 3D. And look, now it's the Z axis and the X axis, and now it's the Y axis and the X axis. So this is a this is a regular view, which is top down, so to say, and this is from well the side, so to say. You can tell we're a little bit off the uh, center of the sector. But we're way up north. So, if we're flying around here, and I thought the gate should be here somewhere, and we haven't found it yet, that might mean the gate is either higher or lower. So, again, I'm just gonna click on the map. Order my ship to go there. But another way to do this, Auto and that this works better in a uh, s sector without the fog, would be just to do as I did, just click to somewhere where you m guess the other gate might be, and then just look around. Oh, there's a planet. I can't find shit because this map is hard to see through. Now when you give commands like this for the autopilot, you'll only give commands on two axes at once. To give commands in um, all three axes you'll have to go to your ship command console, hit navigation and then select move to position. You can select a uh, different sector as well, but let's stay in sector. Does it even have a north gate? Maybe it doesn't have a north gate and I'm confusing this with another map. Uh, no, I think it does, but it's... Well, never mind. Anyways, there should be two gates around here as well, so... What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the... Um, uh, the position on the Z-axis and the X-axis and then hit insert. And I believe that is... Uh, default key. And then I can select the vertical position as well. I'm gonna leave that just a tad up. You can see here in the right bottom bottom right corner of the uh, sector map what coordinate you're at. This is in meters and kilometers, which makes it very Auto easy. Now. I don't think I can. Oh, well. No, no, I can't. Can't uh, show you the menus when we're in set. So, just gonna fly without setup for a bit. What else can we use uh, in the console? Well, this is the uh, main menu that you want to use if you want to issue com com uh, commands to your friendly ships or your own ship if it's something special, like pick up this or pick up that. Well, here we are, standby. Which will all right? So standby stops the ship right uh, where it's at, Auto and idle will activated. make it uh, move about at a slow speed. And the docking commands here, which should be pretty straightforward. Straightforward. As well as fly to sector. You will just make your ship fly to the sector that you uh, commanded to go to. You can also uh, let it follow some something or yourself. 
move to position. I just uh, explained that. And jump to through sector or to sector. We'll uh, let it use a hyper uh, drive to uh, get there, or a hyper jump, whatever. And these commands. I never use these, so. <laughs> Someone else is gonna comment on, uh, yeah, you idiot. <laughs> it's gonna, it's used for this and that. No, anyway, that's uh, that's that. Here you can select some things like I don't want to show this in my property menu, which is handy for satellites if you've got them set up, or factories that you um, don't want to see on your list that might clutter it up, or traders if you don't want to see them, but you can filter them out anyway. Uh, notify. This is very handy when you have multiple uh, ships that you uh, need to give orders to, like a uh, manual trader. When you put this on yes, it will give a message every time it's completed an order. I'm not sure if it gives this, uh, this, these messages if you're in the ship that you put it on, but it will do that for any other friendly ship. This is also the place where you can set up formations. And this will change the way uh, your friendly ships that are following you and what pattern they will uh, fly behind you. The missile fire probability is the amount of, uh, well, percentage, the chance that your friendly ships will use missiles when in combat. If you um, are in like mid game and you've got a bunch of automated traders, you might want to look into uh, a couple of mods that use uh, better turret scripting and uh, mosquito missiles for defense. Mosquito missiles are very cheap, small, fast uh, missiles that you can just spam the shit out of. They don't do a lot of damage, but they do, uh, do a heck of a job against uh, other missiles. And I believe there's a couple of scripts that uh, will use these uh, mosquito missiles for missile defense. You can set up a home base and you need this for a couple of things. There are uh, types of traders that will work as a, um, a stock trader for a given factory, which is most of the time your own factory. <laughs> For instance, if you had a uh, solar power plant, and this isn't a solar power plant, but <laughs> or whatever this is, let's just take wheat this as an example. It's a wheat farm, gamma, argon, wheat farms, and with large you've got a transporter that set up that just wheat. automatically goes and sells your wheat or buys energy cells for this station. You'll need to set it up as a home base for the commands to work. Uh, did we have anything else? Well, nothing for the time being. Anyway, as you can see, we flew into a uh, station here, kind of. And now we uh, got it on the sector map. That's how you discover shit in your sector. I'm just gonna use the SETA now, because this is a very big sector to fly through. And it will take a while before we get there, even on 10 times SETA. Got some ships here, so I'm gonna break off the auto uh, or a wall, at least set up. And what I'm gonna do now, because our scanner range is very small, I'm gonna head towards that ship. I'm gonna turn on SETA again. 
Oh, there we have that east gate. What I was gonna do was uh, gonna I was gonna follow that ship. But most traders aren't in a sector for no reason. They're just not scripted like that. Especially the transporters, traders and whatever. Shuttles, passenger shuttles. They'll have a goal they want to reach. So if this ship is heading in this line, that means the other gate he uh, wants to reach is on that line somewhere. Now, that ship just vanished on a, while it was be, uh, in our lighter circle, but that means that it vanished on the... probably you went lower on the other axis. So anyway, I'm gonna give our ship the command to fly through. Autopilot. <laughs> Sorry, and then break it off because we're too close already. Another small tip, turn off SETA before you hit the gate, because there's still a bug in the game, as far as I'm aware. That if you have SETA on, and you fly through the gate, you might actually miss the gate somehow and fly through it as if nothing has happened. Not a big deal, nothing will get damaged or anything, but it can be quite annoying. So, well, we've covered uh, exploration, and to whoever asked the question, how to enter or find new systems, if you have more questions about exploration, please leave a comment and I'll uh, get back to you. Alright, next question was, how do I upgrade my ship? Well, there's a couple of things to um, upgrading. There's the literal sense of ship upgrades and then there's weapons and shields and stuff. Which is a whole different business. Anyways, here we got a uh, equipment dock. We look at the info. You can tell it's got a couple of weapons. And these do have decent prices if they're full. They're half full, like so, you'll just get average price, so you can just get it cheaper somewhere. But you'll have to be lucky with expensive weapons, because uh, weapons are the uh, number one thing NPC traders trade in, I believe. And it's got a lot of ship upgrades. So what we're gonna do, seeing as we're close already now, this is the doctor. Uh, I'm gonna open up the automated interaction calm center Make your and positive. ask dog permission to land. Now the docking computer will actually go down to the end of the lights and then come in and slowly decrease your speed. You don't have to do that. I don't know the exact speed that's the maximum where you can dock at. I think it's relative to your ship's size. Successfully docked. But as you can tell, President and you just Senator, dock manually and ignore all the lighting. You aboard. Makes it a lot faster. If they have the, um, the uh, oh, well, let's see if they have it. Uh, docking computer. No, oh, they don't have a docking computer. Anyways, if you have Using a docking compu a computer, you can, um, a pilot can dock within five kilometers instantly, which is a big help if you're gonna go the station. trading route. This can be very and if you're starting out, <laughs> well, I can certainly recommend you're gonna uh, you should head out with trading first. So, let's see. We've got these kinds of upgrades and software upgrades. Cargo bay extension, engine tunings and rudder optimizations. Engine tunings will um, upgrade is your is ship's speed and acceleration. A team of highly trained and rudder optimization changes the speed at which your ship can steer or now. roll around. 
This service is a time limited special available. Here we can select how many uh, a team I want. Of highly trained specialists using and the price in this keeps getting higher, so it's not your like, oh well, one all. costs 272 credits, next one is times two. No, it keeps growing uh, exponentially. So I'm gonna buy three, I guess. Products are not bought. Uh, I already have two, so I'm gonna buy one. Engine tuning. There we go. Installed. An hour, tiny bit faster. You have gained recognition. This service is a time. There we go. We gained recognition because we traded now. with the Argon Specialist Federation, control will which is kind of the reputation you have to, within a certain race. We don't have any guns on this ship, so should buy at least one. This so is I a basic show, yeah. laser that is used in impulse This is probably the weakest bought. laser there is to buy. But I need it. I do have two shields installed, it's so either. don't need to show you that. The boost extension, this which boost is a must-have for freighters if you're gonna fly them yourself. They don't work on NPC traders. This but they do work in uh, in on your own ships that uh, you're in. So not your fighters that are flying behind you, just the ship that you're piloting. What it does is, if you hold down tab, or well, that's the default key, but any key you set up for the boost, e boost extension thing, well, it will dramatically increase your uh, acceleration time. So if you install this, you will get up to maximum speed installed. in uh, a much uh, higher rate, so less time. This is the upgraded scanner, the which we can't buy now because we bought a weapon. Don't have enough web uh, money. This is duplex scanner, so this is uh, the, the well the next step, and then you have a triplex scanner, which Incoming is message. times three. Just have a gotten a message. Alright, well, you can read this, pause it if you want. This is the um, the main quest for this start, I believe. Which you can do if you start with any of the other Using starts, except the custom start. If you start with custom, price uh, the, the, the custom game if start at the uh, main menu, you won't have any of the big uh, plots or quest lines traders. available. So let's see, these are all kinds of ship upgrades. Uh, the, the fight command software is a must if you uh, plan on uh, engaging in combat. And if you're gonna go the trading route, because you need Mark II, I believe, for your uh, turrets to be able to go into missile defense mode. A freight scanner is only useful if you want to play the Pirate or uh, are with do the uh, smuggling anti-smuggling exactly missions. Inside other ships they scan. Oftentimes, this scanner is abused by pirates. Uh, navigation command uh, software is a very useful one. I'm gonna buy that. I'm navigation gonna show you the difference in the um, command console in a bit. The trading system extension is a must-have for uh, traders. Trading if you're gonna trade on your own, can this will allow you to for all goods uh, trade a or at a distance. This can be very useful for frequent traders. Oh, the voice is getting on me uh, right now, so I'm gonna turn that off right now. Hang on. Uh, no, oh, sorry. There we go. No subtitles. Command accepted. Command accepted. Command accepted. So anyway, you head to the station and you click trade. But I guess you already saw that. And this is a bunch of stuff they're selling. Now, equipment docks from other races will have other stuff for sale and there are special uh, unique factories that um, or stations that have other things for sale like a uh, jump drive and shit 
So that's that. I'm gonna undock. And I'm gonna clear the docking lane. Because NPCs don't give a fuck where you are. They'll just fly into you. And we're in a, um, well, an M5? No, sorry. M6? No. I'm screwing up all the uh, names here. In a scout ship, which is a M5. Oh, I was right. With two mega jewels of shielding, which is, well, as good as no shielding. <laughs> so if you get hit, we'll instantly die. Don't even get a chance to uh, get out. I'll just die. So, let's see. I'll open up the ship. Freight. Here we can see what we have on board. People or cargo. I'm gonna head over to advanced weapons. And if you if your ship has a turret, it will show up beneath lasers. And this is where you can set up your lasers. You'll need to do this if you buy new weapons. Shields are easier. For shields you just, uh, they auto equip, so you just go to your freight bay and, uh, well, they're on. You can eject them if you want, but it's not smart. Re Reunion had a, um, a, a nice little trick where you could eject your shield and then pick it back up and then you'd have full shields again. I think it still works in this game, but I haven't played vanilla in a long time. I uh, use the XRM mod for um, X3 Rebalance mod, which is a combination of uh, C mod 4 or Combat mod 4 and the uh, Ship Rebalance mod. And XRM does change a lot of things. Your shields will recharge more, more faster, and well, the, the whole balance scheme of the game has been altered, so you <laughs> don't really want to use tricks like that anymore if you have that mod installed. And I do find the XRM mod a must have myself, but your mileage might vary. Alright, well. This is uh, basically how you fly around, check out new sectors, and upgrade your ship. As you can see, this is a much brighter sector. I can just easily recognize gates and factories. This one doesn't have a square border around it, so I have gotten so close to it that I've uh, uh, scanned it or recognized it on the map. Same goes for this gate. Hasn't appeared on my map. But I can tell there's a gate there. And a factory, so that's rather easy in these sectors. Now, I was gonna show you the boost extension. So, this is regular acceleration with the ship. Just uh, keep your eyes on the uh, bottom here, it will show you how fast you're going. There we go. If I hold tab, I'll reach that instantly. If I hop into my freighter, which is in a different sector now, but just bear with me. And I use the boost extension, it will not be instantaneously, but it will be a lot faster than without. So the boost extension is always a, um, well, <laughs> a good one. And the only hard part in the game is the very very beginning like I am in now it can get very uh, intimidating and hard when you don't have much money at all all the upgrades cost a lot of what you already have but if you know how to trade which is a good start for new uh, players you'll get up uh, to a lot of money very quickly and you can keep upgrading your ship rather fast. So, in my next vid I'll uh, try to um, uh, talk more about what else there is to do in this game and uh, about the whole trading scene. 
<laughs> because someone asked me how do you trade and I don't think he meant how do I go to a station and uh, buy things from there I think he uh, probably figured that out on his own and if you haven't you can tell from my vid how I did that from this vid but the economy in this game is pretty uh, incredible it's pretty big so I will have to address that in a different vid because I will be talking about a lot of things and it's quite complicated all right well thanks uh, for watching I hope you um, feel that I've answered your first two questions now and if anyone anyone watching has any questions or remarks please comment on the vid and I'll get back to you either by commenting on you writing you a personal message or I'll just answer it in the next video. Goodbye.